Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the ILN Talk Show, uh, a free space to discuss different developments in Muslim majority countries and beyond um, in the hope of promoting a Muslim case for freedom. Uh, my name is Tasneem Idris, and I am the editorial associate of uh, Islam Liberty Network. And this is actually our fifth episode. Uh, you can check our uh, other episodes in our uh, YouTube and Facebook pages, Islam Liberty Network, where we covered uh, different topics with different guests uh, from all over the world. Today, we're very happy to be joined by Dr. Ali Hassaniya, uh, who is an assistant professor at the Department of Quran um, and Hadith Studies at Shahid University in Iran. Uh, he has a PhD in theology and Islamic studies um, and has published many uh, papers in Persian, Arabic and English. Dr. Ali, um, we're very happy to have you with us today. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm so happy, uh, Ms. Tasneem, that I'm here. Okay, I'm at her service. So. Thank you so much. So our viewers should know that uh, you're a very good friend of the Islam Liberty Network, and you're actually a great contributor for the for the network. Um, and this is actually the very theme uh, of our uh, show today, how your involvement with the Islam Liberty Network uh, inspired you to do a lot of work, um, you know, about Islam and freedom and actually, um, you know, at your, your university. So. Uh, I want to ask you firstly about how you came to know about the Islam Liberty Network. That was the very first contact. Um, yes, the story of um, getting familiar with Ireland for me was by chance because uh, when I was searching on a website for my researches, uh, in a, in an academic website, so I saw the announcement of Ireland for a uh, call for paper for a conference in Islamabad. I mm -hmm. think it was the, it was the sixth the sixth conference of Ireland in Islamabad. Correct. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the mad the, the subject and the title was so interesting because uh, they announced uh, for freedom and economy in Sharia and Islam and in religion. They wanted to, uh, they wanted to create a, a case for freedom in freedom in an economy. So it was so interesting for me. It was completely uh, in accordance with my researches because mm -hmm. many times and in many years, I uh, thought that how can I uh, make my my research pra practical in Islam, especially in society, economy, culture, and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I search more in Ireland in the website. I yeah. so I checked the last conference. I thought it was in, in Turkey or or other places. I'm, I'm not sure now, but yeah. the uh, last one was I in Kuala Lumpur. Found, yeah, yeah, Kuala Lumpur. So. But just one so before I the, the yeah, 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 yeah. I found that the subject, the title, the papers, and also the person who presented uh, papers uh, was so um, uh, interesting for me. So I decided to write uh, a paper for the conference and attend that conference. So my story for these uh, islands, so it wasn't at a chance at the first time. Okay, great, perfect. So we encourage a lot of people to just, you know, find us by chance as well. So the sixth conference was entitled Building Islamic Foundation for Open Market, and it was in Islamabad. So uh, your paper was accepted. Um, I, it's available in our uh, website for those who want to read it. But I want to ask you about the content of this paper, its title, its main idea, um, anything about it. Okay. My uh, paper um, at the Islamabad conference uh, was about uh, a Shia theory in economy. I called it Mantarat al Farag, Shia economy theory. And mm -hmm. I uh, tried to discussion about the freedom and answer some conception, some some misconceptions about freedom. So the title my the title of my paper was Mantarat al Farag Shi'i Economy Theory. Mantarat mm -hmm. al Farag, if I can, if I wanted to introduce my Mantarat al Farag, Mantarat al Farag is uh, uh, is a theory 
uh, among this uh, is theory that is maybe more more uh, popular in Sunnese scholars uh, as Mathalih Mursala or Mantaqatul Af or Maghasid al Sharia. But uh, in Shia, uh, one is scholar. Uh, Sayyid Muhammad Baghir al-Sadr in his book Our Economy introduced this uh, theory. Mantaqatul uh, Firaq, or I can translate it to uh, built of lacuna or free zone. Free zone is better we say mm-hmm. free zone in Sharia. Uh, points to an area in religion without uh, abiding legal statement. It means that in Sharia, we have two parts of laws. Uh, the part that uh, are basically in the Quran and Hadith, and mm-hmm. so we have the rule of that uh, of everything. But some uh, new thing that they are not in Quran and Hadith, and also in Nas. Okay. So uh, the ruler of the government nowadays and in all times uh, is free to uh, make some statements about new uh, things. For example, uh, I can point to, for example, ins- insurance. So mm-hmm. insurance is, is, a, is a new thing in these days, or for example, human cloning or something mm-hmm. else. Yeah. So uh, the ruler in, and, and the Islamic government is free to make some new statement, but it must be under the uh, under the law of religion and not uh, not a part of it of, of it of that so okay. it is mm-hmm. okay thank you so much so i'm i'm sure that you know the attendees uh, then found it very interesting and what happened after that i mean the the conference was done you interacted with a lot of people the speakers and everything and then what happened what what was what, what was so inspiring about um that conference that made you do what you did um after that just tell us about the steps okay. right after uh, the, the um, the show. I mean, because um, as you know, a lot of people, either speakers or, or attendees, they attend so many, um, so many conferences, workshops, um, you know, gatherings, and then that's it. They don't share their knowledge. They don't do something about it. What was so special? And you, you did, you know, I'm sure that you attended a lot of other uh, conferences across the world. But what was so special about this conference that made you do what you did? Uh, so before. Uh... I attend uh, that conference in Islamabad, so I didn't have uh, a very clear uh, situation of that conference and maybe the people, the organizer and something else. Mm-hmm. So, but after uh, I attended that conference, I found that um, I found a very uh, sharp and young and very, very, uh, how can I say, active, group they mm-hmm. really they they really want to uh, discuss the freedom in religion and want to do something uh, practically and not only th- only theoretically so yeah. the paper the papers also was they were so fruitful and were so um, uh, and so inspired me to uh, research more and more about uh, freedom. I think uh, the atmosphere of that conference was really uh, a, in freedom and liberty because the discussion was so uh, in freedom, I think. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, also, and also I found some new friends in that conference. That was also Great. very, yeah, very important for me because I found some friends. I We had, uh, we were, in touch with each other after that conference. Um, mm-hmm. After I came uh, back um, to Iran, to my country, I decided to continue my researches on freedom and, and Islam, freedom and religion. I uh, prepared uh, a research project for my university and uh, delivered it to uh, my department, Quran and Hadith. Yeah. Uh, studies department in university. 
I found some uh, friends, some colleagues, and some students. So I, I organized. Uh, I think uh, I, I, I organized a group that they could uh, manage this uh, research project on Islam and liberty. Mm -hmm. So uh, my plan on Islam and liberty um, was basically on freedom in Islam and uh, after that freedom in my country in Iran because Iran also is an Islamic country. So yeah. after that conference, after that conference, I think after that conference, a part of my researches, a part of my researchers, uh, part of my research researchers uh, get toward uh, the freedom in Islam and uh, in Islam and in the religion. Okay, so you know, you didn't only focus on Iran; you expanded it to the Muslim world at large. And it wasn't just about Iran as a country; about it was about you know freedom in 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 Islam at large. And you also made sure to um, you know involve some of your colleagues in these research. And um, was it like um, any like any students' involvement, um, or just your colleagues, like fellow professors and doctors? No, uh, my group uh, um, uh, of, uh, uh, com comprised of. Um, uh, two professors, uh, mm -hmm. two PhD students, uh, and one master's students with okay. me about, yes, six, six person. And yes. of course, you told them about ILN and they're really excited to join us as well. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. <laughs> okay, great. Any articles, books that resulted uh, after the, like resulted on these re research or um, any concrete things um, after what you did with your colleagues? <clears throat> Just a minute, please. Sure, of course. Take your time. <clears throat> Okay, uh, until now, after 2018, uh, after the conference in Islamabad, yeah. uh, with, with my colleagues and three students, uh, I wrote eight papers, well, one paper in a book. Uh, mm -hmm. I attended in two conferences. And uh, we had one meeting, one critical meeting, and also we have uh, uh, two completed paper that will be uh, published very soon. <clears throat> Great. And, and the topics uh, are like uh, religious freedom in Iran and the Islamic world, or uh, what is like the, the major themes of these papers and articles? Okay, as I stated, uh, as, as I told you, uh, the topic was freedom mm -hmm. on the top, but uh, yeah. Freedom in Islam or freedom in Iran? Uh, in freedom in Islam, mm, we decided to uh, at first speak about the uh, Shia scholars' uh, viewpoints on on freedom in Islam. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, we started from uh, Shahid from uh, martyrdom uh, Sad or Sayyid Muhammad Bagher Sad. That's uh, a wrote Mantaqatul Quran. Uh, for Islamabad conference, yeah, uh, and other and other uh, Shia scholars like, uh, for example, Khomeini, Mutahari, and Dr. Shariati. Mm -hmm. uh, in Islam, uh, I wrote another paper. It is uh, about uh, holy ignorance and its connection with intolerance. Mm -hmm. So that I delivered it in the seventh conference in. Yeah, uh, I'm in coming to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was also very, very important. Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, fine. And also uh, now the, this paper also is published by uh, the Web of Science uh, Journal, the Quran and Hadith Studies. So. Mm -hmm. uh, in Islam also, uh, I focused on uh, feminism in Islam or Islamic oh. feminism because 
because the rights and uh, the rights of women, I think, um, is so important for course, freedom yeah. in Iran. Yeah. <clears throat> so we uh, searched, uh, we started to search about the viewpoints of some uh, Islamic feminists, like, for example, Margaret Batran or mm -hmm. Raf Ad Hassan and some others. So um, we wrote some papers, we finished them, and we uh, published some of, some of them also in, in some journals. Mm -hmm. uh, about freedom in Iran. <clears throat> so uh, about freedom in Iran, uh, the first paper, uh, we focused on the women's right in Iran. Um, so uh, we wrote a paper titled uh, socio-political rights of Iranian women before and after the Islamic revolution in Iran. Mm -hmm. It was, mm -hmm. a so, I think it was so interesting topic and uh, it was published by a journal inside Iran. <clears throat> um, also, uh, we focused on uh, minorities in Iran, like Jews, uh, Christians. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, very interesting, and also the Zoroastrians and some others. We wrote uh, <clears throat> a paper uh, titled Iranian Jews Tendency to Religious Visibility and Adapted Coexistence in Iran. Okay. So the paper is complete now, and it will be uh, published very soon by Springer uh, Publishing Center. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, after that, uh, we wrote a paper about uh, one, I think, for me, it was so important, and also it is uh, one of uh, the topic that we could focus on it. about. It was about uh, temporary and child marriage in Iran and Afghanistan. Okay. Um, but my topic and my paper was about temporary marriage in Shiite, uh, in Shiite and Sunni uh, Islam <clears throat> based on the Quran and Hadith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was that was important because uh, some people thought that uh, in Iran and in Shia there is temporary marriage and the rights of women are under the rest restriction or something else. So uh, we finished it and it was published also by Springer upon uh, publishing in a book. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next paper about uh, freedom in Iran uh, is about uh, <clears throat> the role of uh, Hebrew-Aid society, ethnic and religious minorities. That's, uh, may God, I will, uh, I will deliver it and I will, uh, inshallah, have a, speech, have a speech in next conference in Vienna, mm -hmm. in Austria. Great. Awesome. So, so uh, yeah, all of these is, were inspired by Alan. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, all, of wow, that's, all of them. That's impressive. <laughs> so, all yeah. of these important and excited top, exciting topics were directly or indirectly um, inspired by your attendance of uh, the fifth, uh, sorry, the sixth uh, ILN uh, conference in Islamabad. Um, mm. And that's, that's really impressive. That's really what we're, uh, what our work is for. Like these are our goals to inspire people like yourself. So um, as you said, the, um, the fifth conference in Kuala Lumpur uh, in 2016, uh, was on political freedom. And the sixth conference that you attended in Islamabad was on uh, economic freedom. And then the, the, the seventh conference in Jakarta in 2019 uh, was um, on religious freedom. And that's where I met you. And I got to know you uh, uh, because I was the MC of the uh, of the conference back then. And you're such a very humble person, but our viewers w should know that um, you are, your PhD thesis has gained the title of the best 2016 PhD dissertation in Iran. And this is awarded by the Iranian Ministry of Science, Research and Technology. And not only that, you've been uh, chosen twice as the best Iranian uh, student during your educational career. 
So, um, you know, I'm mentioning these details, not just to show our viewers how um, outstanding you are, but also to take pride in the fact that uh, ILN could inspire someone as bright as you. So I have a reason yeah, that why you. I'm mentioning this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so you came back to ILN one more lots time, the thanks, very next year. Lots of thanks to God. And lots of thanks to God, yeah? <laughs> of course, of course, yes. Uh, so, so you kept coming to, to ILN. So the very next year, you came, uh, you sent another paper uh, that you mentioned about the, uh, the holy ignorance, um, and you came back and you made sure to attend again. So what made you come back to ILN? There's like a million other conferences taking place simultaneously in the world. So what kept you coming back? Just a minute. Sure. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> okay, just uh, I wanted to say you something that uh, at the same time that um, I attended the Indonesian conference uh, mm -hmm. in the Seventh Conference, I was uh, invited by a conference in Germany at the same oh, wow. time. Germany. I didn't know about that. But, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, I thought that uh, my topic and also the conference of Ireland is so better for me and for my the, for my way of research uh, mm -hmm. than Germany. So I decided to um, to go to to Jakarta for that for that conference. Jakarta. Yeah. Um, uh, so you know that Iran and Jakarta is far away. So yeah, um, uh, and you know that uh, I don't know. You know that uh, I I had a story in this conference. You that missed I your missed flight. My, I know. I, I remember. Missed my flight. Yeah, missed yeah. My flight. Uh, and you came I, straight and took, and just delivered it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It took about thirty hours to reach the Jakarta, and then I um, then I reached. Uh, and get uh, the the hotel there directly. I went for the conference and present yeah. lecture. So, but uh, that conference Ireland was so important for me to attend. And uh, the topic was about my topic was about the connection between religious intolerance and holy ignorance. Discussion on religious freedom based on the Quran and Hadith. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that nowadays in four corners of the world, uh, there are groups rising and violating human dignities and social orders by the name of religion. Yeah. Uh, the existence of such belief is due to misconceptions about religion, especially when speaking on Islam versus the West. Uh, in the other, tolerance occurs in a society wherein different social groups and, and the parties live together with different beliefs and customs. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh, different ideas regarding the sound meaning of the uh, term tolerance, which is basically in Islam comes from the Quran and Hadith literature led to contradict practices by different religious sets. So mm -hmm. I decided to speak about the connection between the ignorance and intolerance in society. That's very interesting. Yeah, and my theory uh, is that yeah, yeah, my theory is that uh, in the Quran, when the Quran and God speaks about the elm and knowledge, it doesn't mean only elm writing, te teaching, or learning something. Mm -hmm. It means uh, it, it means against uh, like uh, against bias, against uh, intolerance, against. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, uh, rash things against uh, how can I say and against the uh, against the violence and something else. Yeah. So yeah. so so uh, knowledge is uh, not uh, just about be, yeah. So you mean that knowledge yeah, yeah. is not just about striving for good things, but also avoiding bad things. Yeah, it's very yeah. important because in society, in a society, we have different groups. Uh, from different beliefs and maybe different ideas. If you wanted to have a peaceful and coexistent society, mm -hmm. we must uh, know each other more and more and more. If we get familiar with each other, which, with each uh, um, other's beliefs and something else, so 
we can tolerate each other more and more and more. So mm-hmm. the tolerance is connection to the knowledge of each other. And the ignorance is connected to in- intolerance in society. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. That's really great. Well, um, I, I can't really help but share the good news that we're preparing for our eighth conference um, in October in, in Bosnia, uh, inshallah, uh, which is going to be on inclusion, pluralism, That's and amazing. prosperity. And we are eagerly waiting for your paper uh, so that we can meet you again. Uh, so all the details are uh, on our website for everybody who wants to uh, you know, join us. And um, on on a final note, um, I want to ask you about like any advice that you might share, um, you know, with Muslim youth who want to learn about Islamic studies more and I want to specialize in them. Like, um, how do you set your priorities? How do you plan, you know, uh, what to write and what to, you know, uh, you know, search on? Uh, how do you look for certain opportunities? Of course, other than joining ILN. Um, just kidding. And um, like, basically, how do you advise your students um, in this regard? Just a minute. Sure. Uh, so, uh, to young researchers uh, and also to students, my students who wanted to focus on Islam and liberty and uh, uh, topics like this, I have some recommendations. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say that Islam uh, should not be uh, seen as a uh, old text only, maybe old, old things. Uh, we must not focus on only on Zawahir uh, of, the, of the Islam, I mean. Yeah. Uh, uh, Islam is a world religion uh, for all people, I think, for all humans. Not Islam and also the other uh, uh, the other monoth- monotheistic religions also are for people. Of course, yeah. Uh, Islam is has a so great uh, connection. Uh, Islam is so uh, great in connection with this world, and it is not only for that world, for for hereafter, for next world. Uh, so all Islamic laws and all Islamic ahkams are so important for prosperity and happiness of human, not for that world, but also for this world. Yes. So uh, we should uh, focus to understand Islam more and more, to understand Islam deeply. Uh, if we read the Quran, if we go to Hadith, uh, go to the Prophet, go to Sahaba, go to Imams, so we must uh, think that how can we solve our problems nowadays by the Quran? How mm. can we solve our problems by Islam, by religion, by Islam, by law? Uh, if we wanted to solve our problems by religion and religion uh, be visible more and more in our uh, life, we should focus uh, on uh, practical Islam and not theoretical Islam. It's okay. very important. I recommend all, all my students and all researchers that if you wanted to research um, on Islam, just um, go and research on practical Islam. The Islam mm-hmm. that is involved in society, involved in political things, involved in economy, involved in culture and everything. Just we related should to our lives, Islam. not just, yeah. yeah, life. Life is very important. We should have an Islamic life. We should have an, an uh, Islamic lifestyle. So mm-hmm. it is my first recommendation for all researchers that try to focus on practical Islam. It's very mm-hmm. important. 
So when they look for mm -hmm. uh, topics of studies, they would just look for topics that are related to our lifestyle and everyday life, not just, you know, mm -hmm. topics that are just, you know, for, uh, you know, the academia realm. Like they have to be yeah, connected yeah. to our everyday life. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, freedom in Islam. Freedom in Islam is so important and it's a practical Islam, I think. Okay. And, practical, and also freedom in the, re in the religion. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, when we uh, look for uh, this practical Islam, we must uh, take away from uh, bias and something that uh, they forbid us to have a good judgment in Islam, good judgment in religion, good judgment in our researches. Yeah. So, and also, uh, beside this, we try to uh, have uh, a practical Islam in ourselves, in our life. We must be also a good uh, Muslim, a good human, uh, beside these researches. So mm -hmm. I recommend all my students at first to have researches on practical Islam, and uh, at second, take, um, uh, take away from everything that uh, ban them from um, a good research, and then mm -hmm. uh, to be a good a human at first and then good a good Muslim at second for to have a good researches. Mm -hmm. That's that's really interesting. So uh, just to add something on this regard, we're not focusing, we're not choosing to focus on freedom because the West or any other parties are, um, you know, uh, criticizing Islam and just saying that it's it's Muslims are not free and they don't enjoy their freedom. We're actually, you know, focusing on this because freedom is, you know, part of our a religion it's not just something that oh it's a reaction kind of thing we we want to choose to focus on freedom because people are attacking us no it's not the case we just focus on freedom because it's incarnated in us and it's an essential part of our religion right yeah, yeah absolutely that's true. great okay um thank you so much dr ali for uh being with us today it's been really an enjoyable discussion i hope everybody enjoyed it as much as i did and i'm looking forward to having more interesting discussions with you and to seeing you probably uh soon inshallah inshallah see you inshallah. see you inshallah thank you very Thanks much thank you very much Salam. goodbye <laughs>